Hey everybody, it's your old pal Robert from Thrillride.com. How you doing? So today I'm stopping by Galco's Old World Grocery. Now this store, located in the uh, Eagle Rock section of Los Angeles, is well known for a couple of reasons. Number one, it is uh, got a collection of soda pop, which is apparently unrivaled uh, anywhere in Southern California. Maybe the nation, maybe the world, I don't know. But they apparently have over 600 different types of sodas here. And uh, it was also featured as the exterior for uh, <laughs> Meyer Superfoods, uh, starring, created by, directed by, written by Dr. Steve Brule and his pilot Bad Boy, <laughs> which if you've seen on Comedy Central, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's unique. Anyway, I'm, I'm kind of obsessed with it. I've seen that thing too many times. But uh, yeah, all the exterior shots of the uh, store here at Galco. So uh, anyway, let's go take a look at some of the weird sodas they have on sale here. Well, I'm not quite sure what to make of this sign up here. Galco Soda Pop Stop, established 1897 and serving Highland Park since 1955. Huh, I wonder if it existed someplace else and then moved here in 1955. Oh, by the way, so I guess it's officially Highland Park, not Eagle Rock, we're pretty close to Eagle Rock. But uh, yeah, that's a pretty long history no matter what. And uh, it's certainly been here in Highland Park since a Disneyland opened. Love the mural outside, definitely uh, selling the variety of goods that are inside. Cowabunga, dude. Well, they sell all kinds of goods here, not just soda. That's obviously a pretty good wine selection. Uh, but yeah, here in the center of the store is where this incredible selection of uh, sodas exists. Awesome. And they've got a pretty decent selection of beer as well. So, I don't know, whatever fluid you want to consume, they got you covered here. Yeah, looks like a pretty cool little collection of exotic lemonade flavors here. Kiwi, lemonade, triple melon, southern peach, grape berry. Mmm, yeah, getting thirsty already. You know, I've never really understood exactly what sarsaparilla is. I assume it's some kind of a root. But uh, I love this. Herb sarsaparilla. Yeah, yippee ki yay. Yeah, cherry limeade. That's a that's a pretty good combination. I like that. And I love the uh, <laughs> vaguely Santa-like or Christmas elf-like figure. The mascot for Frosty. Cute. I'm a big fan of strawberry as a flavor. Do you not see enough strawberry uh, soda pop out there? Orange, of course, is a classic. And uh, yeah, I really like the packaging on these two guys. Yeah, Bubble Up is a brand from uh, way back in the day. When I was a kid, I could still find these in vending machines at a little local golf course, but I have not seen Bubble Up in many, many decades. That's cute. And I love the kind of retro design on these Lemmy lemonade bottles. Kind of reminds me of those uh, lemon head candies. Mmm, <laughs> red apple. That's another uh, pretty appetizing sounding flavor. Of course, that immediately makes me think of the brand of cigarettes that Bruce Willis smokes in Pulp Fiction. <laughs> yeah, grapefruit is another uh, citrus flavor I really, really dig. I've never heard of grapefruit kiss. That sounds pretty tasty. I used to uh, really enjoy Ballast, uh, Ballast Points Grapefruit Sculpin. Then they switched from using real grapefruit juice to a concentrate, and it just fell off uh, the top of my favorite beer list. It's a shame. <laughs> Cock and Bull Diet Ginger Beer. Mm. Ginger Beer is another favorite, and I am totally on board with the uh, packaging design here. That is fantastic. <laughs> Look at how orange this Dublin, Texas sweet peach soda is. Yeah, that's almost radioactive. Neat. And they got a grape as well. And then this Dublin 1891, a green apple. Beautiful. Yeah, this hippo-sized beverages, they really lean into the whole, we're big. Colossal Cream, Jumbo Root Beer. <laughs> That's pretty funny. And uh, what do they call over here? Prodigious Peach, nice. Okay, here's a new discovery, coffee flavored soda. That is a first for me. 
And I'm really digging the uh, black and white label graphics and uh, kind of unusual typographic selections here. Yeah, that's elegant, neat. Yeah, there are just several aisles that go on and on. All different kinds of sodas, all different kinds of flavors. And you know, I'm really as much about the packaging as the flavors. A real interesting variety of uh, graphic treatments, logos, color palettes, all that good stuff. It's neat. Of course, there's always room for the classics. So plenty of Coca-Cola here to uh, satisfy your sweet tooth. And this soda, I've seen this before under different brand names, Blue Cream. That is a very strange color choice. It's like, do I really want to drink a bottle of carbonated Windex? <laughs> I'm sure it tastes delicious, but yeah, that color choice triggers me. <laughs> I appreciate soda brands that uh, take the time to write some clever copy on their packaging. Hey, here's the guy's name Guy. Nice. Yeah, Prime members are pretty awesome and I couldn't live without my thesaurus, so I support these statements. Yeah, the, the floor space for this store is almost entirely devoted to sodas. Look at this. Very cool. Retro sodas. Yeah, beautiful. Americana. Seen a lot of those here. Ooh, brownie caramel cream root beer. Oh. Yeah, Jones is another brand I've really liked. Uh, strictly for their label and the packaging design. And yeah, they got some good options here. Strawberry lime, berry lemonade, blue bubble gum. Yeah, there's some more of that Windex coloring. <laughs> oh, orange cream. Yeah, that's my jam. Love that to death. And of course, root beer. Can't go wrong with root beer. Well, I have no idea what foo foo berries are, but it's a pretty damn adorable package. And foo foo berry soda just sounds too fun not to drink. <laughs> These look like craft beer bottles, but they're craft microbrew sodas. And you've got a root beer here, and then a butterscotch beer on the left. Oh yeah, the flying cauldron. Hmm, I wonder what that's supposed to remind you of. <laughs> but yeah, those are pretty awesome. And here's a, looks to be some kind of an Asian brand that makes a durian cider. Now I've had durian fruit. I had it in Malaysia, and I'm likely never to have it again. So I think I'm gonna take a Take a pass on the cider, but pineapple cider? And something called musk melon cider. Yeah, also new to me, but that sounds pretty intriguing. Well, if you are a uh, big lemonade drinker, then you might want to seek out Lorena's artisanal pink lemonade. That promises to be a cut above your standard uh, citrus sugar water. You know, and again, I'm always about the uh, label designs, and these are really minimal and Clean. I like these a lot. No idea what the flavors are, but uh, yeah, that's very high end. I like it. Wow, blood orange soda. Now here's a, this is the soda. The color alone, super, super appetizing. That looks just delicious. And again, the label, uh, label pulls me in. Oh, here's another one, Africola. Really dig the uh, very kind of minimal graphics. That's awesome. If I'm reading it right, it says lemonade, some kind of a lemonade and some other type, but so not strictly a cola, I think. Of course, uh, Waritos, if that's how that's pronounced, that's a famous brand and I've uh, sampled many of their flavors, really good stuff. I think I had an orange or the mandarin one with uh, tacos when I visited Tio's Tacos down in Riverside a few months back. Okay, I think I've, uh, I think I found some purchases here. Got a Halloween themed sodas, Dr. Jekyll's Pepper Elixir, Spider Venom Cherry Cola, oh, badass, love it. Werewolf Howling Ginger Beer, <laughs> and uh, Wicked Apple, yeah, that is awesome. <laughs> well, of course, you know, come fall, you gotta have your pumpkin flavored stuff everywhere, and this they call a spice tonic, kind of unusual. And then right next door, there's a brand called Jack Black's, and I don't think that's the actor, but I'm not 100% sure. But here's another one of them blue cream sodas and a blood red cola. Yeah, Goy is a well-known uh, uh, Hispanic soda brand. And coconut soda, that sounds pretty tasty. I don't think I've ever had any coconut before. Of course, they got a pineapple, a grape, and then guava. And guava sodas I've had, those are pretty damn good. 
Oh, come on, Leninade? That's brilliant. I love that so much. And again, A plus for the uh, for the bottle design. That's fantastic. <laughs> And no, drinking too much of this won't make you sickle. I'll see myself out. And of course, if you're looking for something already chilled and ready to drink, they got a good selection of that. Yeah, down here they've got all their uh, Halloween flavors again. Oh, there's Salem Sisters Bad Apple Soda. <laughs> yeah, definitely need some more Halloween themed food. Never have too much of that. Yeah, you, uh, you don't just want to come and uh, check out the soda. We've got all kinds of intriguing beverages here. Things I have not seen before. And uh, again, a very international selection of uh, various kinds of beverages. Pretty cool. Yeah. Just goes on and on. Look at this. Oh yeah, a lot of Asian stuff represented here too. Always a plus for me. Ooh, here's one, a flavor I am very intrigued by. Pomegranate with hibiscus from Bruce Cost Ginger Ale. Mmm, that sounds damn delicious. So this appears to be a uh, an Italian soda brand, and I'm really not too sure what some of these flavors are. There's obviously ginger, but then Meld Zen, and here's something you can recognize, cola. Yeah, interesting. Of course, whenever I think of Italian sodas, I think of Beverly, that absolutely hideous drink they sell in uh, Epcot. <laughs> And here's another one with some pretty awesome label graphics. Fritz Limo. No idea what language that is. Is that German? Yeah, Hamburg. Wow. Cool. So yeah, beyond the sodas, they got a whole bunch of uh, pretty interesting candies here. Some new, or some relatively contemporary, and then some that go way back. Like this Chico stick. Does that look and sound like candy to you? It doesn't look and sound like candy to me. And the good old Razzles, I remember these when I was a kid. Starts as a candy, and then it's gum. Sweet Tarts, Rolos, Ohio Spud. Boy, that is something I haven't seen in maybe a generation or two. And uh, yeah, whatchamacallits, those are still around. Good and plenty, still see those. Peanut Chews, that's a bit, uh, bit of a deep dive. Sugar Daddy, Bottle Caps. Nut goody. <laughs> There's one. That's new to me. Rocky Road, Payday, Turkish Taffy. Oh man, yeah, that's a, another childhood favorite. And good old Abba Zaba. Yeah, you all know about Abba Zaba. French Chew Taffy Uno. Oh, Big Cherry. Oh man. Yeah, I remember I used to get those as a kid. And Candy Buttons. Wow. Yeah, that's another one I haven't seen since I was maybe in single digits. And then here we go, just in time for Halloween, you got your wax fangs, the nickel nip, oh man, the candy cigarettes, <laughs> I can't believe they even sell those, Pop Rocks, yeah, very nice, Crows, oh, that's another one that I just don't remember seeing ever. Again, I'm, I'm so much about some of these incredible labels, and uh, Caramel Cream, mm, that's another one I may have to sample, that sounds really, really appetizing. Yeah, still another brand that's new to be Pentamins. Curiosity Cola. I very much dig that name. Yeah, very elegant looking, very retro. I dig it. Sort of leaning into that kind of apothecary graphic a little bit. Just, oh yeah, Cherry Cola is another one that's uh, always a popular choice for me. Wow, Mac Fuddy Pepper Elixir. I have no idea what the flavor profile of something like that could be but it's intriguing and this is pretty cute a little Shirley Temple yeah I like the very bright pink bubble gummy graphics also pretty appetizing yeah it's no surprise that uh, butterscotch flavored beverages such as this one here have become quite popular since uh, <laughs> the world was introduced to such things in the uh, Harry Potter novels yeah this is where you can get your fix if you don't have time to get over to a Universal theme park <laughs> Well, that's a pretty smart way to uh, brand your soda. Dang, that's good. And a red cream soda. Interesting. I wonder if red has anything to do with the flavor. And then down here, this is another new flavor to me. Banana soda. I'm a huge fan of bananas. But I've never had a banana soda. So I need to try a Filbert's banana soda. Interesting. Oh, and they've also got a watermelon soda. Mmm. Dang. There are too many good flavors in here. 
Well, if you're uh, planning a, a soda for a road trip, I think, uh, I think this is your brand. That's ah, pretty sweet. So Dang also makes an Italian cherry soda. Yeah, I wonder what Italian cherry tastes like. That's a unique differentiator. I love this Kickapoo Joy Juice, the original dog patch recipe. Now, I don't know if that is a direct pull from the uh, Lil Abner comic strip or not, but it kind of harkens back to the original kind of positioning of Mountain Dew. This is kind of hillbilly soda. So I wonder if this is a contemporaneous to that. Now this is interesting. Here's a brand called Moxie, the original elixir, distinctly different. But I am not seeing anything that indicates the actual flavor. I guess it's a mystery until you try it. Interesting. Well, here's a beautiful bottle. Green Apple Mundit? Monday? I don't know whether that's French or something, but uh, I don't know if you can catch the amazing uh, details of the mold in the glass itself. Yeah, that's a pretty beautiful bottle. So this is how seriously they take soda here. There is a soda creation station. You grab an empty bottle, you go up to these uh, pumps, and you can add up to eight or nine pumps per bottle. And uh, look at the flavor selection here. We've got green mint, ginger, espresso, dragon fruit, mango, peach, blood orange. Oh my goodness, a whole bunch of them. And then uh, you pick your level of carbonation and fill it up. And then you dry it right on it and pay for it. Brilliant. All right, this is my work in progress. It's a few squirts of rose, a couple of squirts of violet, and a couple of squirts of strawberry. I have no idea how this is gonna turn out, but I'm, I'm already super thirsty. So when you load up the carbonation, you may have to wait a little bit in between uh, squirts because the bubbles come flying fast and furious. <laughs> and there it is. You can even put a bottle cap on it. So rose, violet, strawberry. We'll see how that turned out in just a minute. <laughs> All right, it's time to give this a whirl. The checkout guy said that the uh, floral flavors tend to work pretty well. They're uh, not too overpowering, not too uh, super sweet, so let's see if it lives up. And again, we got rose, violet, and strawberry. Oh. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try to sell this to Coke. Oh, yeah. Mmm. That's good stuff. Yeah, you got to go in there and make your own. Fun. All right, I think that is going to bring this one to a close. <laughs> so thanks for coming along in this uh, quick little trip through uh, a little slice of soda pop heaven. Yeah, Galco's is uh, it's pretty great. And of course, my interest in soda extends from the fact that as part of my work on the development team of the Walt Disney Bird Place, I uh, helped launch Ozell Soda, the brand that Elias Disney first was involved with way back in the day. So if you want to know more about Ozell Soda, go to O dash z e l l dot com and be sure to check out the uh ozell story page for all the cool history anyway uh once more thanks for coming along and we'll catch you in the next one